Hey, Rob from Order 42 here. Today, we've got something a little special, something a little different. We're going to talk about my experience with the PlayStation 5. Yes, this this monstrosity sitting on my desk. We're going to we're going to go into it. You know, how did I get it? You know, what do I think of the system itself? What are the games like? And uh, you know, what is it like as a movie player? And even more importantly, should you rush out and get it at any cost? Well, yeah, we're going to go into that. But but hey, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. We've got content covering movies and games and books and all kinds of stuff. And it's, it's, it's what I love to do. So, uh, you know, stick around. But hey, we are going to go into it right now. So yeah, how did I get this thing? I mean, how was I going to get it? I mean, it's like I, I'm, I didn't pre-order it. I didn't I didn't go on eBay and try to, you know, buy one for $1,200. I mean, that's, that's just not me. You know, it's just not what I'm going to do. So, uh, so yeah, I'll tell you. What I did is I went to nowinstock.net. And what they do, what I, what I think is really cool, is you basically you pick your country and then you pick all of the retailers that you would like to buy from. And then you can pick the individual SKUs of what you're looking for. So say you're looking for the digital edition, you can do that. If you're looking for the disc edition, you can do that. Some of them, you, it may be easier to get if you get one of the bundles. So you can do that if you want to as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's how I did it. I basically signed up for it, I think on, uh, I think like December 28th or something like that. I said, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and see if I can get one. You know, let's let's see what happens. So it was like December 28th. I'm I'm pretty sure because that's when I started getting a bunch of notifications on my phone. And you know, it's like, oh, this is in stock. And then of course I would go and it's out of stock. And I did that a few times. But but finally on January 7th, I got a notification that that Best Buy had them right. So I'm looking at my email and I'm like, crap, it's 45 minutes ago. Okay, well let's just go check. And of course I come in here. I sit down at the computer and uh, pull up bestbuy.com and guess what they're sold out and so I'm like hmm I wonder if some of the other sites have it so I just look around you know just a couple of the different sites Target and you know Walmart uh, GameStop and in fact even the the PlayStation store itself or the I guess the Sony store itself I pulled that up and of course all of them were out of stock so I was about to close it and I refreshed the the my uh, my tab for the for bestbuy.com and it said add to cart I'm like, what? So I hit click add to cart and it said something along the lines of we've got to, you know, we're, we're making people go through an extra step. So check your email. So I check my email and I get this code. Go back to the site and it says put in the code. So I put in the code. It lets me lets me in to where I can check out. And I'm like, huh. Recently, I had tried to get one from Best Buy. And of course, it was one of those situations where you know, during the checkout process, the thing locks up and I keep refreshing and I'm still there and I'm, I'm still trying to check out. And it and by the time it actually goes through, it says, oh, we're out of stock on that. Well, I already had my credit card saved. So I just hit check out and it went right to the checkout process, hit complete. And that was it. Got a notification in my email that, yeah, you purchased it. And I'm like, that was way too easy. From all the stuff that, that I'd tried, why did it suddenly work? And like an almost an hour after the fact, well, it turns out Best Buy, what they were doing is they basically, from what I understand, they're allocating so many, uh, so many systems in a specific area. So what may happen is, you know, they say, oh, well, like the, the Dallas Fort Worth area, we're going to give them 150 of them, right? And whoever gets to, you know, whatever store in the Dallas Fort Worth area that allocates these PS5s, they get them. And uh, I guess that's what happened. And they kept releasing them, you know, they, they'd go out of stock and then they'd come back and then they'd go out of stock and they'd come back. And I think that was to ensure that these bots wouldn't continue to, to hit the site, right? And what was even more interesting to me is when I went to pick the thing up, because I get the notification a day early, by the way, on January 12th, it says, your PlayStation 5 is ready to go. And I'm like, I can't believe it's actually happened. I mean, I was actually really getting excited. I was like, I can't believe it's act it, it actually went through. Everything everything worked. So I go to pick it up and I'm sitting there in the uh cuz what you do is you you know, you park in a in a parking spot with and a bunch of them they're numbered or whatever. And uh there's just a ton of people out there. 
you know, and it says, oh, you know, when you get there, you know, do this and, you know, do this thing on the app and all that. So I did that. And this guy, I'm watching this guy come back and forth with a shopping cart full of PS5s and he's delivering to them to people and people are just constantly coming in and out. And I'm like, did I just get really lucky and my best buy just had a ton of them? Or is it, like I said, more, maybe a, the Dallas-Fort Worth area got so many allocated and they all arrived on the same day? I don't know, but it was uh, it was kind of crazy. I, I saw at least 20 PS5s come and go by the time he got to me. And yeah, he basically, I showed him my, my app. He goes, he goes, yeah, everything's good. Here you go. And I just, I mean, seriously, rolled down my window, grabbed it, put it in the passenger seat and drove away. I felt like I did something wrong. It was so easy. Now, here's the weird thing, okay? I didn't expect to get it. I knew that I was going to pick one up eventually. And I even told, I remember uh, Jay, Shady Jay, right, from the from the Game Chasers, he said, he said, so did you pre-order one? I said, no. Nah. I said, And I said, I'm not going for all that stuff. I'm going to wait until I can walk into a Best Buy and pick one up off the shelf. And he goes, okay. You know, which makes sense. A lot of people were like that. They were just like, you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna chase after this thing. I'm just gonna get it when I can, you know. And it's and if I don't end up getting it, you know, right away, no big thing. Again, nine days after I signed up for the thing, I found one and I was able to get one. I can't explain it, but from what I can tell, Best Buy has the best, the best way of doing it because they're making you pick it up. You know, a bot in, say, New York City, I mean, I don't know where these, these people, these, these scalpers are, but let's say if, if there's a bunch of bot, you know, people around New York City, they're not going to buy one that's in Fort Worth or Dallas or anything like that. They're not going to buy those. So the idea that they're, they're basically allocating different parts of the country to get them and you can only find them in stock in that area it makes a lot of sense. I feel like Best Buy's got the best the best thing going right now. So when they get more, that may be the, the place to go. The other thing that I would say is make sure that you have accounts set up at all the retailers that you think you might buy from. You know, like if you want to buy from, from Target.com, make sure you have a Target.com account. That way you don't have to worry about it. You can log into it, stay logged into it, and you'll be good to go. What I did for Best Buy is like I said, I'd already saved my credit card information the last time that I tried, so it was really, really fast and easy. And I think that because of the way that that checkout system works, it helps if you've already got that stuff saved, so you're not sitting there typing in numbers to try to get the thing. You know what I mean? So that's my suggestion. Um, best of luck to anybody that, that tries to get one, and and if you've been having trouble so far, I I think you're gonna you're you're gonna find one soon. I mean, I think they, they keep pushing more out, so I think it's going to be all right. Let's jump into the controller. What do I think of it? What, I mean, well, I have to say, it feels amazing. Like, if you if you have a PS4, you know, and you have the, the that DualShock controller, it just, it feels fine, but there's something about this, the way it contours to your hands, and I have, I have kind of small hands, but... Um, yeah, it just feels really good, and there's a, a really nice weight to it. You know, it feels like it's weighted, so I really like that about it. And, of course, you know, those adaptive triggers are really cool, you know. The the idea that that, uh, that these games can, can control the, the pressure on those things, and beyond that, the rumble is, is fantastic. Like in many cases, you know, the, these adaptive triggers, you know, they, they, they change tension, you know, based on what you're doing, you know, like, like if you're swinging around a Spider-Man, it feels a certain way. And then, and then in Astro's playroom, you know, if you're using a gun or, you know, or a, or a bow and arrow, you know, that you can feel the tension. There's even a part in Astro's playroom where you're pulling a slot machine and you can feel the slot on this side. And then you catch the ball in one hand and you break it. And it's, you kind of like, you kind of squeeze it and break it. You can feel that tension in the controller. And it's so cool. The other thing too that I will mention is that there are there is a speaker right here, and this speaker actually does a little bit for the rumble too because especially when you're walking on different surfaces you can hear that coming from here too. It's just an extra little added dimension that I think is really really cool. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, I think the the thing is cool. The, it looks good. I have really grown to love the controller. Um, I'm I'm very very impressed, and I'm I'm very glad. I'm very glad that they went with this design. I think it's I think it's great. I think it's great looking, and uh, yeah, it feels awesome. If you've seen a PS5 unboxing or anything like that, um, the thing is big. I mean, the thing is just gigantic. I mean, look at this. This thing, it's 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 heavy. It's substantial. It feels like a ton of bricks. I mean, it's it's big. And I have to say, the uh, when I first saw the design, I thought, man, I really like that. I think that looks great. I don't like it. It's weird. I I like it less now, after purchasing it, the look of it, than I did when when it was announced and when it was you know the the images were released. I think it's just, I I guess it's just because it looks so weird from some some angles. Straight on, I think it looks really cool. But the way that um, the way that it sits in my uh, my entertainment center, it just it just doesn't look right. It looks looks kind of weird. And of course, it's just so dang big. I mean, it barely fit in my entertainment center sideways. So what I did was I went ahead and moved it from the right side over to the left side that's sitting next to my PlayStation VR that I haven't used in what a year it's been a long time anyway yeah it just that it, it it I think that's the best place for it because that larger area on the left side of my entertainment center it can ventilate really well and I hope oh, there's I have doors right on my entertainment center I I open the doors you know especially uh the right side it has my uh, my receiver my audio receiver and, and it gets pretty toasty in there anyway so I've always kind of been in the habit of, you know, when I'm going to sit down and watch a lot of TV, I'll, I'll go ahead and open that door so it can ventilate. But, uh, but yeah, the, the thing about the PlayStation 5, though, really, the system itself, it's all about that load time. That load time is ridiculous. There's video of me on, on Twitch uh, playing Astro's Playroom, and, and just the time that it takes to get from the, the main lobby area into a level, it's so short. You know, you can you barely have time to to take a drink. You know, what I mean, it's just it's so quick, and I think that's uh, it's just amazing, and it keeps you in the game. You know, it keeps you playing. It's 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 weird how, for me, it's it's a little strange because I actually like those breaks a little bit. You know, the the break where you just kind of have okay, I can just sit here for a second. You know, and and then oh, now it's time to get in. All right, let's do it. You know, there's there's something weird about just always being always playing. It's something that I'm just not used to, I guess, you know, in, in this level of, of equipment. But, but yeah, it was pretty cool. And I have to say, the setup was incredibly easy with the PlayStation app. I would suggest that if you, unless you have just a ton of stuff that you can't get anymore on your, you know, your older system, I wouldn't suggest doing the, uh, the transfer over, over, the, uh, over the air. It takes a long, long time. I mean, it was going to take like 12 or some, 12 or 16 hours or something like that. I canceled it because I was like, you know what? I could just download those games faster than it would be for me to transfer them in the house. Because I didn't have, uh, I, I guess I could have used an Ethernet cable. Because it does, it does have Ethernet, but I, I just didn't do that. So anyway, I just re-downloaded them and it, and it wasn't that big of a deal. A lot of people buy the PS5 to, uh, I don't know, they play games on it. But anyway, yeah, let's talk about some of them. Astro's Playroom. I got to say, um, for something that really is sort of just a demo for what the system can do and then, you know, what the controller can do, the game is fun. It really is a lot of fun. It's and it's it's got that that kind of cute factor that's 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 actually really really fun. It really kind of almost felt like a Nintendo game in a, in a weird way. And I hope that doesn't sound like a like a like a bad thing. It's a really, really good thing. It felt like a good way to show off everything the controller can do, everything the system can do. It was just a lot of fun, and I had a blast playing through that one. I also picked up the Spider-Man remastered with the Miles Morales game. I haven't played through Miles Morales yet. I'm still making my way through the original Spider-Man remastered because I've had it for a while on my PS4, but I never finished it for some reason. And so when I got this and I said, like, you know, I want to play Spider-Man Remastered. You know, I want to play it on the PS5. So why not buy that? I've been playing through it and I've been enjoying it. It's been a lot of fun. Now, I wasn't really attached to the old model of Peter Parker. So, so I don't really have much of a comment on that 
I found the new model for Peter uh, just fine. I, I thought it was I thought it was good. So I've really, really enjoyed playing through that. I will mention that uh, playing the Spider-Man Remastered game uh, as much as I have, I have had a couple shutdowns. Um, you know, in the, in the age of cyberpunk, I guess that's uh, to be expected. Maybe not. But uh, but yeah, I get the, the little shutdown and uh, the error reporting screen and, and, and just kind of move on. And I don't really lose my place. So it hasn't been anything where I've been like super put out by it, but I thought I'd mention it. Um, and also the, the, I guess the last game that I've been, uh, that I played, I haven't really played a whole lot of it and that's, uh, Ghosts of Tsushima. And, uh, I have to say I've, uh, been blown away by how this game looks. I haven't finished it. In fact, uh, I played a little bit on stream and that's as much as I've played so far because I've been trying to finish this, uh, that, that Spider-Man game. So, but yeah, once I'm done with that, I definitely want to give, uh, Ghost of Tsushima my attention because it is a beautiful game on the PS4 and I can't imagine if they actually come out with a a sort of uh, like some sort of patch for the PS5 to make it look even better I can't even imagine because it looks amazing right now so uh, yeah really looking forward to that I will say that I am probably gonna play Miles Morales next but uh, but yeah I'm uh, I'm very excited um, and also um, I've got Horizon Zero Dawn and Final Fantasy 7 remake uh, on the hard drive and ready to go, so I'll be playing those pretty soon, soon too. But, but yeah, um, for the games, like I said, I've, I've been very, very impressed, um, very, very excited about the future of this system, and uh, and yeah, me playing on it. Now, for those of you who have been around this channel for any length of time, you know that I'm a movie dork first and foremost. I mean, I love my video games. But movies are my 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 initial passion. You know that's 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 something that I I love dearly. So yeah, I mean I bought the original PS3, the big fat PS3, six hundred dollar behemoth, which I guess it's not really a behemoth that much anymore. But anyway, um, yeah, I bought that to be my Blu-ray player. So this is also this PS5 is also going to be my 4K Blu-ray player, and I probably will play just as many movies as as games on it. So. So yeah, let's go through some of the ones that I've purchased recently. If you watched uh, my recent stream where I unboxed my Christmas present, well, this was it. You know, I bought the entire Nolan set from the UK off of Amazon.co.uk. And uh, the reason that I got this is because, uh, you know, it's the 4K set. I mean, buying these individually would have been, you know, too much, uh, too much in the U.S., but uh, Dunkirk, Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, Inception, Interstellar, and The Prestige. Not all my favorite movies, but just the fact that I have all the Batman movies and Inception in one uh, pretty nice box, I really, really like it. And so far, I have been seriously hashtag blown away by the picture quality of these movies. Now, I didn't have the digital versions in 4K. I had the HD versions. So... Maybe that's part of the jump, and I have to I have to constantly remind myself that that yeah I hadn't seen these in 4K yet, so maybe that's it. But right now I'm impressed. And and by the way, if you are interested in this set, maybe you you think, well you know what maybe I want the Blu-rays, but I don't need the 4K yet because I don't have a 4K player. Guess what? This set I've tested. The Blu-rays work in my PS5. I don't think they're supposed to. I thought. The UK had a different region code, but apparently not. So this might be a, a good pickup for for those of you who are uh, who are in the market. Of course, the the first thing that I purchased um, for this sort of thing, um, I bought this last year sometime, and mainly because I knew that I was going to get them in 4K eventually. I just didn't have a 4K player, so I wasn't in a big hurry. But something told me that I just really needed to go ahead and pick it up, and that is the Skywalker Saga. You know, now I know there's a lot of people that were like, "Well, why wouldn't you just buy the this or that?" And look, all of those movies have something I like in them. You know, not all of them are the best, granted, but uh, you know, there's some good movies in there, and they look insane. Now, the first one I put in was, of course, Episode Four. A New Hope. It's the movie I've seen the most. It's the movie I know the best. I thought that would be a good way to kind of test, you know, how this set looked. And of course, it looks great. It's 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 always been one of my favorite movies, but man, it looks so good and so pristine. 
And uh, the next one I put in was episode one. I read uh, Bill Hunt's review over on the digital bits of this entire box set. And he said that episode one was the worst as far as video quality. And I thought, okay, well, I know what episode one is supposed to look like. Let's see what it looks like. And yes, there are parts of it that look bad. I mean, I don't know if it's just because of the the mix, the mix of, uh, you know, because the, they, they shot that movie on film, right? And and I thought maybe that's part of it. You know, they, they shot it on film, but they were doing a bunch of effects, and maybe that's part of it. It's weird. There's some of the, uh, the, the CG just looks kind of weird, and even some of the rotoscoping, especially in between, uh, like, for example, the fight between Darth Maul, Qui-Gon, and Obi-Wan toward the end of the movie... It's weird because it almost looks like a really bad Photoshop, you know, because the it's like the the background isn't as blurred as it should be. And there's almost this feathering that's around each of them, you know, when there's a digital background and it just looks bad. And I think it's just because the 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 tools have just gotten so much better since then. And the final Star Wars movie that I've watched um really just bits and pieces of, was episode 8. And I know, I know there's people that don't like The Last Jedi, there's people that love The Last Jedi, but I think most people will agree that it is a gorgeous movie. And that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see picture quality. That's that's what I was there for. So I really was paying attention because episode 8 is one of the, the more recent movies that I've watched in 4K digitally that I was really interested to see if I could if I could actually see the difference. And I think the difference is there. The, the The color depth is just it's crazy. There's it, it's hard to explain if you hadn't if you hadn't seen it yourself. But there is a difference. Is it a perceptible enough difference for some people? I don't I don't know. I just know that from my eye, it looks really really nice. And the second movie that I had purchased after the Skywalker saga was this because Jaws is one of my all time favorite movies. And it was one of those where I was actually more curious about how it was going to look on an older movie, right? A movie from 1975. How is it going to look in 4K? I know that they were going to take the time to remaster this as as well as they could. So I knew that that it was going to look good. I just didn't know how good. And I will tell you, from a movie fan's point of view, I'm not sure if you could tell the difference between a digital version and the disc but i watched the same scene side by side and yes there is definitely 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 a difference especially in a movie like this where film grain is king right film grain is something that a lot of people especially when they're watching an older movie they want to see that film grain it's part of the image it's part of what they remember and this specific scene that i was looking at is when chief brody is leaving his office to uh, to go get uh, get get things to make signs, right? And he's walking down the street, and I, I got to tell you, the film grain looks insane, insanely good, I should say, on disc. It's weird. It almost looks muddy on the digital, and it's got to be because of the compression. There's just too much information that needs to be transmitted in order to get that film grain perfect over uh, a, you know over digital. It's just it's just not possible. It does look amazing. Now, I still say that most people probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And they probably think that 4K over digital is just fine. And I think for most people, I hate to say it, for most people, it probably is just fine. Especially for the convenience factor of being able to just hit a button and pull up your movie. So yeah, that also brings me to my thoughts on the the whole setup of the PS4 in my entertainment center. I mean, not just setting it up for, you know, your, your, your user information and stuff like that. I'm talking about actually getting it set up. One of the things that, that um, for me, I have a Harmony One remote. Now, Harmony One is one of the older universal remotes, but it's really, really helpful because you can say, watch TV. And what it'll do is it'll turn on your receiver, turn on your TV, put your receiver on the right, uh, the right input, put your TV on the right input, and turn everything on where it needs to go. And it's pretty awesome um, once you get it all set up. Now, with the PS4 and the PS5, you have to have an external device that transmits IR, infrared, over Bluetooth. 
So I haven't tested this yet. I never got one of those for my PS4. I did have one for my PS3 back in the day, but but I, I must have uh, turned that in or something because I don't have it anymore. So I'm going to have to buy one of those conversion kits um, from Sony to to allow this to be used with my Harmony remotes. Um, so that is that is a thing. It's something that you have to consider if you do have a Harmony One remote. The other thing I noticed is that in order to get full picture quality from my PS5 to my TV, I had to unhook my PS VR, right? Because that's how I had my PS4 Pro set up. I had it set up with the PS4 or for the PS VR. You know that breakout box, right? If you have a PS VR, you know what I'm talking about. It's that breakout box where it's there's all these cables. One goes to the TV, one goes out to the PS4 at the time, and then uh, one or two. I can't remember if it's two, but anyway, it goes to the PSVR. So it's basically a way for the signal to be split. One goes to the TV, one goes to the PSVR, so you can see, right? It's a, it's a basically a secondary display. That won't work with the PS5 um, unless I'm missing something, which is totally possible. I mean, I've only had this thing a couple of weeks, but... But it's one of the things that kind of made me go, oh man, so I have to unhook all this. Okay, so I had to unhook everything and rewire. But uh, but yeah, I, I figured they'll probably come out with a PSVR 2, I would think. Because the PSVR 1, I don't think the uh, the quality in the in the headset is, is really up to snuff anymore. So I'm kind of curious to see where they move for the PSVR 2. But I am excited. I just, you know, I kind of wish the PSVR worked without having to... You know, mess with a, a bunch of cable running, but uh, but yeah, overall it was still pretty good. Now I guess the big question, especially if you don't have a PS5, the question is, should you get one? Should you get one at any cost? Well, I will say right now, regardless of whatever you are thinking right now, you shouldn't get one over the price. I mean, I don't think it's worth eight hundred dollars. Or nine hundred dollars, or even up to twelve or thirteen, or however much it is now. I think it's hovering around eight or nine hundred dollars on eBay now uh, for the digital version, which is five hundred dollars in stores. I don't think it's worth that, um, you know, to, to pay extra. Um, but I'm not you, so you know, if you if you think it's worth it and you want to do it, then uh, you know, who am I to judge? I just think that I just think that maybe you should wait until you can buy it from an actual retailer that's not overcharging you for the for the same thing that that I got. Um, the other thing is, are you missing anything? You know, is it is it like, oh my gosh, I've been wanting a PS5 since it came out and I just haven't been able to get it, you know? I gotta say, the hunt for the PS5 has been more fun than actually getting it. Does that make sense? It's like I had a lot of fun on the search. It's weird. I mean, there was a point where I started to get a little irritated, but but for the most part, the hunt was part of the fun, you know? And, and, and I have to say, even though I now have one, and it's easy for me to say this, right? It's easy for me to say, oh, just wait. Just wait. It's no big thing. I understand. There's a lot of people that want to play this thing. The fact is, there's just not a whole lot of games on it that are, in my opinion, worthy of having to pay some some exorbitant amount to get one I don't think you're missing much now I think the PS5 is still worth it there's some games coming soon that I'm really really excited for I'm not sure if it's called Kena or Kenna Bridge of Spirits but that game I am looking forward to I'm really really excited to play that um, it just looks like it's right up my alley. I mean, if you've watched me over on Twitch, you know, playing Breath of the Wild, you know I like these kinds of exploration type games, and I love the colors. I love the way that this game looks. There's there's a lot of games coming out. Trust me. Trust me when I say that, yes, there are a lot of games coming out, but right now there's not a whole lot to sink your teeth into. So I just think that, that uh, you know, you're, you're better off waiting at this point, waiting until you can pay regular retail price for it, and yeah, there you go. I will also say this. If I had to have waited, like if I didn't get this, you're just not missing that much. I mean, yeah, Astro Astro's Playroom is cool. The controller is cool. The 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 load times are insane. 4K Blu-ray. If you don't have one, it's insane. It looks great. 
but all of that stuff is is always going to be there you know it's not like they're going to sell out of playstation 5s and you're never going to have them again they're going to be available so just just hold out you know it's it's okay you know it's okay to wait so yeah i guess that about wraps up my playstation 5 review overview experience i guess would probably be the best word so yeah i i just hope that that somebody gets something out of this you know it's it's like it's it's hard to convey the information that others would find useful. I'm just trying to really focus on what I've experienced. So I hope it was, uh, it was, uh, entertaining at least. And, uh, yeah, let me know down below what you think. You know, it's, I'd, I'd love to hear from you and, uh, yeah, thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.